Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. So for today's episode, I'm going to share with you different classroom management hacks. And these ideas are taken or adapted from the book of Mike Roberts. There are 10 tips that he discussed in his book, but I am planning to present them to you in three separate episodes because it is quite lengthy. So for today, I will start with the first three acts. So if you mastered this hacking classroom management lesson, you will be the teacher that they make movie about. Are you ready? So let's begin. So hack number one, remember it's a classroom, not a boot camp. So as a teacher, we need to realize or uh, be conscious that we are working with students. We are not working with military people. So we deal with little kids or even, you know, middle school and high school. So they are children. Always remember that you are in a classroom, not in a boot camp. So what some teachers usually fall into is that teacher starts the year with a lot of no, no, no in their rules. So they tend to develop rules that says no. Let's take a look at some example of these rules. Rule number one, no chewing gum, and then no eating or drinking in the classroom, no going to the bathroom without permission, no talking without raising your hand, no cheating, no cell phones, no inappropriate or disrespectful language, and no being out of dress code. So that is a lot of no's. And what is the result of this? You are going to have a grumpy student and they will feel like, am I in the classroom or am I in a concentration camp? So be careful when you are formulating rules for your students. Okay, so what are you going to do instead? Let's try this. Step one, you need to commit to letting your students be empowered. A good example is that instead of our, um, assigning seating arrangement or give them a specific seat, you can tell them, you can pick your seat where you feel that you are more productive. So in that way, they are responsible with their own choice. They pick that seat and they're expected to be more productive in the classroom. Another expectation, step two is, you need to frame expectations in a positive way. You can tell them that they can do it, that you are expecting them to uh, do well in the test, to do well in the project. So all those positive encouragement. So if you set positive expectations or you set the bar high, they will live to that expectations. Step three, include students in the implementation of rules and procedures. As a teacher, we don't just write our own rules and expect our students to follow them. It will be more effective if you are good, going to develop your rules and procedures and include your students. And why? Because if they develop their own rules and procedures, they will feel like they need to follow. That is their own procedures or rules that they set up for their class. So they're expected to follow it instead of just being forced to follow the rules of the teacher, okay? Step number four, don't punish the entire class. So I often see that. Let's say there is a one student who misbehave. What the teacher will do is she will take the recess for the entire class, or she will just say, okay, no one can play in the computer. You don't have your computer time because so-and-so misbehaved. And that is not um, fair for the other students who are really doing their best to be good in class. So if there is one student who misbehave, you need to deal individually with that student. Talk to that student in, uh, privately and fix the problem and do not punish the entire class, okay? Step number five, 
sharing the class average that is needed to be stopped, okay? Stop sharing the class average. Like for example, there is a test and you are distributing the papers, the test result, and you are announcing the score, like Peter got 100, John got 80, and Mary got 60, you know, that is a no-no because the students will end up to be embarrassed and they tend to kind of feel uh, inferior if they get a low score or uh, they tend to compete with one another in an unhealthy manner. What is good about uh, just giving the grade or score of individual students is like they will keep uh, it to themselves and they will try to make it better the next time. Okay, so stop sharing the class average. And step six, of course, is change as needed. So once you develop rules and procedures with your students, and it seems like some part of it is not working well, nothing is set on stone. You can always change as needed, okay? So let's move to hack number two. Expect their best in and out of the classroom. So it's, it's not only in the classroom, even when they are in the cafeteria or in the playground or in the other classes, you have to communicate with your students that you expect their best, whether it is in and out of the classroom. So how are you going to do that? First, you need to remember to be the model you have to be the role model to your class, okay? Start your class with a smile to motivate them to feel good for the day, okay? Always give them a smile, especially early morning as they come to your class. Tell your students you expect their best. Always tell them that. You set the bar high for them and expect them to do their best. And the third one is Dress up. As I have mentioned again and again, it is very important for the teachers to dress appropriately or dress professionally. Because when you're dressing up appropriately for class, your students tend to admire you secretly and they tend to make you as their model. They will start dressing up themselves uh, properly and appropriately as well. And, and, they, and they feel good when they see you looking good as well. So don't forget, dress up properly, okay? Fourth one, ask your students to make you proud. So it means wherever they go, outside or, you know, during the games or wherever, they have to remember to behave properly and to make you proud because they are identified as your students. So if they misbehave, what is the result? Oh, those are the students of Miss, you know, Miss Mary. So you have to always tell your students to make you proud and you expect them to behave in and out of the classroom. And the last one, always remember to thank your student at the end of your class. You have to thank them for being cooperative. You have to thank them for doing their best. You have to thank them for being polite. So you need to recognize that they did well in your class and thank them before they leave, okay? So what is something that we can try? So step number one, clearly articulate your expectations on day one. Because if you don't articulate what is expected of them from day one, they will, they will not know what to do. They will not know how to behave. And if you try to do it in the middle of the year, it's so hard to undo the not so good things that they learn. So clearly articulate your expectations on day one. Step two. Hold all students to high expectations. So I mentioned that, set the bar high. Differentiate often, okay? There are some students who can work alone just by themselves and they want to be in the computer because they are visual learners. There are some students who just wanted to read on their own 
And there are also some students who would like to work in a small group with their teachers or with their peers. So you need to differentiate and know the ability of your students. We do not present less lesson that is a cookie cutter for everyone because not all students have the same ability and have the same learning style, okay? Step four, model what you want to see from your students. It means if you are expecting your students to write a good paragraph, you have to model with them how to make an effective or good introduction or how to make a juicy or complete uh, body of the paragraph and how to make a good ending. So you need to model what you expect to your students so they know what to do. You do not assume like if you give a paper and pen and you give the title, they already know what to do, okay? Step five, provide reminders and examples. So there are times that your students forget about the rules and procedures. You, you don't let that pass. You need to remind them and you need to give an example of what is good behavior and what is uh, expected of them. And the last one, get feedback from your students. We always give feedback to our students like, you know, you did good today, uh, your paragraph uh, is excellent, things like that. But we forget to get feedback from our students. It is important that we also need to ask our students, like, how did you find the lesson for today? Is it easy for you? Is it too hard? You need to know those so that next time you prepare your lessons, you can adjust. Whether it is too difficult, you can adjust it. Or it's too easy, you can also adjust it. Or they can say sometimes even it hurts, they say it's boring. So what will you do as a teacher? Next time you make your lesson more interesting and more interactive, okay? So getting feedback from students is also important. What is fact number three? Taking a game, a play, or a concert. What does that mean? That instruction does not take place only in the four corners of your classroom. There are times that you need to take your students to some places for learning as well. You can take them to the game, to the theater, to the museum and make those uh, experiences as uh, related to your topic or make it also as a learning experience for them. Expose them to something um, very uh, helpful for their development emotionally, socially, and even physically. So if there is a, a sports event, you can take them to a sports event. So if there is a cooking lesson that is happening for kids, you can take them there. So that is fact number three, take them in a game, a play, or a concert. How are you going to do it? Follow the following steps. So first, step one, you need to decide if you can do that, okay? So if you plan an event, you need to remember if you can do it. You do not plan something that is not doable or something in step number two, an event that does not interest you. You need to find an event that interests you and that interests your student. You're not just preparing something or planning on something just for the sake of doing it. And step three, you can also invite colleagues along. It can be like a, a group field trip between, you know, the freshman class of uh, class A and B, things like that. In that way, they can socialize with the, with the other group of students as well. And step four, definitely if you plan on doing something, you need to make sure as a teacher to attend that event. You don't make it like you set a time to go to the theater uh, in a nearby college and all of a sudden, all your students showed up and you were not there. That is a no-no. You plan an event, make sure you be there for your students. And step five, which is quite interesting, talk about the event the next day in class. 
make it uh, like a discussion or something that uh, starts the day before you begin with your major lesson for the day. You can talk briefly about the event. Okay, what did they learn? What interests them? What can you do uh, better next time? Things like that. Even though everybody went to the event, everybody would like to talk about it. So give them a chance. Otherwise, they will make noise and talk among themselves and you know they start buzzing. So make it like a whole class uh, storytelling and discussion. And step number six, because they enjoyed it, you can start planning your next event. Why is it important? This will serve as a motivation for your students, you know, to at least do their best. And um, at the end of the month, probably or next month, that will be their reward. They will go to another event with you. And of course, they want you to be proud of them. So they will keep doing their best and they will do their best even in and out of the classroom. So those are the first three hacks, okay? Try practicing them and I'll give you uh, the next three for the next episode until we finished everything, okay? So I hope you learned a lot from this episode. As teachers, we need to master good, excellent um, classroom management. And we cannot say that um, all procedures or all rules apply to specific group of students. So it's a learning process, but you can do it. And at the end of the day, you will be the teacher that they will make movie about. Okay, so thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time on the next episode, part two of the classroom management hacks. So bye for now. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you and to God be the glory. Bye.